Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. Now, I've got a minor unboxing video uh, for you here. So um, I was actually just about to open this box. It arrived today. Um, and I thought, I know that some people, in fact, quite a lot of people, I think, like watching um, things get unboxed. So I've got, as far as I'm aware, there are three swords, uh, modern um, replica swords that have been sent to me by um, Cas Iberia, um, by their different companies or different brands. Uh, sent by Cas Iberia for me to review, test and everything else. So um, <laughs> the reason that it's quite a momentous occasion is these have been stuck in uh, customs, a kind of no man's land, um, for four months. These were sent to me at the end of September and we're currently on the 30th of January. Uh, that is how long they've been stuck and there's numerous reasons for that. Obviously the pandemic has had a huge effect on um, basically shipping around the world. I've had issues shipping swords out, uh, antique swords out to various people. Um, and then there was Brexit which has had a, some kind of effect as well, many effects in fact. Um, and you know various other things and so I won't go into the the ins and outs but this was an incredibly complicated package uh, to get to me. Um, now if you're on the verge of importing something to the UK I don't want you to panic. This was a one-off during the period that this was sent to me and uh, between then and now I have had numerous things come to me from India, from China, from America, from all over the place that have come more or less straight to my door. Um, in fact some things get from China to my door in like five or six days door to door. So you know why this one took so long it's I partly know the reason it's long and complicated but basically it's HMRC's fault not uh, the couriers I have to say it was it was um, uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs if you're wondering what HMRC is anyway so there we go there's the box there are three things inside let's have a little look at what um, I'm uh, what I've got in there this isn't going to be a review now it's going to be a first impressions the reviews of these things and testing and cutting and stuff like that will come later right so Cass have sent this very well uh, packaged up the box has obviously been in uh, transit for four months so um, it's been a bit a little bit battered amazingly customs people have not opened this box it clearly hasn't been opened uh, so anyway it's just been sitting there for four months in a warehouse um, right so uh, here's a nice long box there we go whoop I don't know what the first item will be um, oh, I, I do know what two of the things in here are and I know that the third item is a a new model uh, a prototype maybe um, I'm not 100% sure but anyway let's have a look in the box um, what am I using to open it with today I'm using an Openel a fairly large-ish uh, Openel knife good French uh, knives I use them for a lot of my uh, boxing um, and packing purposes they're nice um, nice tools right there we go let's that there right so the first item is now this is something I actually asked uh, Cas Iberia if they could provide me with one of for the purposes of reviewing and this is directly because of you that's right you I can see you Michael looking into the screen right now no it's because of various people actually who specifically asked me to review this sword and I'd never seen one uh, so they asked me about my impressions of it and I didn't know anything about it so this is the um, uh, so it's Cass Hanway um, but it is I think the um, Kingston Arms side sword so there we go uh, first impressions it's light it's responsive it's got bags of distal taper it's got a uh, scabbard here um, so the scabbard is I think leather over something I'm not sure if it's leather over wood or it might be plastic or something inside but it's stiff um, it's a side sword in the 16th century style um, of around 1530 to 1570 something like that um, and it's nice actually I tell you what, the, the Hanway side swords that I have seen before, this has got a far more forged and welded looking guard. In fact, it is looking at it. This is a not a cast guard. So the side swords I've seen previously from Hanway were cast, quite a stainless steel look. And these seem to be 
I mean, they may be cast elements, but they're definitely welded together, and it's a lot more slender, uh, a lot more like originals, in fact, than um, than the uh, than the Hamway one, which I've seen before. I'm just having a look. It does seem to have a Hamway logo on it though so I'm confused. I will get back to you about which, which brand this is um, but this is uh, a sharp and it's sharp enough to go through a water bottle but it's not sharp enough to cut my hand so it could probably do with a bit of extra sharpening but that's actually very very nicely proportioned actually. I'm just going to grab a tape measure to see how long the blade is quickly. So obviously I will put uh, links below to these um, products so that you can see their um, specifications. So to the guard, it's a 35 inch blade. So it's a good, it's a good length. Um, and it's actually an edge of 33 inches from the top of the um, finger rings, as it were. But that's, yeah, that's uh, got very nice handling and feel to it actually. Very, very nice. It's um, quite flexible, but it flexes where you want it. So it's got it's reasonably thick up here, probably about five, five or six millimeters, um, tapering down to really quite thin. Um, so it's a light, responsive blade, proto rapier you could call it, but really these days we'd call this a side sword, even if side sword is not a historical term. Um, yeah, very very nice. I can't see how the uh, hilt is attached. Um, that doesn't seem to be a nut and I can't see any peening at the end but um, anyway I'll look into that and a review of this obviously will be coming in due course but that's um, that's a nice sword um, I like that uh, at first at first sight and feeling I'm impressed and it's nicer than the Hamway side swords that I've seen previously right let's have a look at the next one right, so here comes the next one this is <laughs> this is a, a larger box, so it's the same kind of length as the other one, but you can see it's wider, and it has a, <laughs> a nice cautionary message on there. Caution! The contents of this package are very sharp and can cause injury. Please exercise care during unpacking. Um, right, I will do. That's some um, good advice. Let's, let's see how sharp it is. Um, as sharp as my knife? We'll see. Um, so... This is, they're nice boxes actually, good quality boxes, very, very well packed. I don't think there's any realistic way that these could have been damaged uh, in transit, so that's good, given, especially given that they've been sitting in a warehouse for months. Thanks for that uh, HMRC. Um, right, let's open this up. Aha, so, give you a first sight of it. Ta-da! There it is in its uh, packaging with these nice foam uh, sections that stop it rattling around inside the box and of course make the box light as well which is better for shipping um, and energy consumption and um, carbon footprint and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so this is a longsword as you can probably see and this goes by the name of the Rhinelander I believe. Now this is very very interesting, it's peened at the end I can see there, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is very interesting sword. So it's the same kind of scabbard as the uh, side sword we were just looking at. Whoa, that's a nice blade. That's a hefty blade, actually. It's a kind of beefier blade than I was expecting. It's not heavy, but it's it's got some authority to it. That's that's quite broad at the central percussion. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's that's pretty damn sharp, actually. It's sharper than the side sword. I mean, that's going to glide through water bottles, I would think, no problem. I'd make it even a little bit sharper, but yeah, that's certainly sharp. Now, you will notice one of the characteristic things about this is it has a side ring. That's right. So first ever longsword I've ever had that um, had a side ring. Um, so there we go. It's the uh, Rhinelander, I believe it's called. Um, and it's uh, uh, essentially it's this is a type of longsword that came around at the very end of the 15th century. But really, it's more of an early 16th century thing having a side ring on there. Some people would argue with me on that and go, oh, you do find side rings in the late 15th century, even very occasionally earlier in the, in the mid-15th century. But generally speaking, this is a 16th century thing. So this is kind of a kind of Emperor Maximilian period, around 1500 AD uh, sword. And it's quite a short grip, actually. It's, this is a true bastard sword, I'd say. It's not, a, it's not a long, long sword grip. It's quite short. And it's got a sort of um, pear-shaped pommel. Wouldn't quite call it a scent stopper, but um, and at the end it's peened. And now, obviously, full reviews of these uh, 
coming, but you can quite clearly see that that has been manually peened on the end. Um, yeah, and as I say, review coming, but first impressions, it's, it's a beefy sword, everything's tight, it's sharp. Um, I imagine that's going to cut uh, pretty damn well. Uh, so there we go, review of that coming in due course, thanks to uh, Cass Iberia. Uh, link below uh, for sending these. Right, let's have a look and see what the third thing is. So here's the uh, third box. Um, <laughs> this has got another warning on it, I'll show you that in a second. You can see this is a shorter one. Um, now this, I believe, is either a prototype or it's a model that I haven't actually seen. I don't know what this looks like, actually. This says, warning, this product is very sharp. Improper handling or misuse of the product may cause serious injury or death. Uh, and, you know, always, whenever you're uh, messing around with sharp objects, obviously always be um, careful, um, or, or indeed anything else, you know, cliff edges or fast-moving cars. Just be careful. Uh, we want you to stay alive for as long as you possibly can. So um, let's cut the tape again very well packed. No way that this was going to come to any harm. Right. Wow. Wow. Uh, this is something very interesting that I wasn't um, expecting, actually. So I knew a rough description of what was coming, but I had no idea what it would look like. Um, so I'll flip that around. There we go. So what this essentially is, um, is a sharp um, form of cutlass. OK, so it's a type of cutto or cutlass um, of, a, shall we say, 16th to 17th century um, design later later than the um, other swords we've just looked at. In Italy this would be called a storta. Now it's interesting this has got a very fancy uh, leather scabbard. Can you see that? With all um, uh, kind of uh, imprinted, I can't remember what the term is, but uh, not inside but stamped essentially, uh, decoration um, all along the scabbard uh, and the construction is a sandwich uh, construction of leather um, and it's got a strap on the back so you can wear it. Right, I've got no idea what to expect when I pull this out. <laughs> One thing I should say is that I believe this design is from Angus Trim, the famous uh, sword maker um, who I've known for many years as it happens, not face to face but through the internet we've communicated over the course of many years. And I believe that this is a model of sword that he has been working on uh, with um, Cass Iberia. Um, and it has a nut in the end, which is how uh, his swords go together. So you can tighten the sword up, you can take dismantle the hilt, you can change the hilt parts, modify them, whatever. All right, let's have a look at the blade. Wow, that's nice. It's, um, so it's wrapped in plastic at the moment, um, kind, of, you know, uh, kind of sheet uh, with oil on it. Obviously, I'm going to be careful because this is, as the warning said, uh, sharp. Let's peel this, peel this off. I'm applying pressure only to the flats and not the edge. It's quite a stout blade, I've got to say, actually. For it's, uh, it's got an absolute ton of distal taper. Um, ah, let's get this plastic stuff off. So it's uh, underneath the plastic is um, oil. Uh, or grease more than oil, actually. There we go. And uh, obviously I'll... <laughs> here we go. I've got some WD-40 here. I'll get some WD-40 on that and um, wipe off the grease. There we go. You'll get a better view of it, I think, now I do that. That's, uh, that's a funky thing. Well, that's brutal. And yeah, it's sharp. Yeah, it is sharp. It's got a secondary bevel ground on it. Um, but I think that will make mincemeat of water bottles, certainly. I'll probably polish that edge up. It's a little bit on the rough side. Um, but yeah, that's a, essentially a 16th century storter um, or cutto or cutlass or, or hanger, uh, whatever you want to call it, with a side ring and a knuckle bow and then a, a, a ring, con um, a bar connecting those two as well. And it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. It could actually do with a little bit of tightening up uh, at the nut, but that's easily enough done. It's got a very nice um, cord and leather wrap grip that um, give it quite an expensive look. So very, yeah, very interesting uh, sword. That's going to be a lot of fun to cut with and just a lot of fun to wave around, actually. So, yeah, there we go. Three offerings from Cass Iberia. Full reviews of these and cutting will come in due course. Thanks for watching. 
If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and you'll get notifications if you click that notification bell about new videos coming out. And if you haven't seen all of my other reviews, then have a look in my review playlist right now. Cheers for watching and see you again soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.